Welcome, welcome back to another week of Summer 2024 Vibe Tier List, where I rate the most recent episodes of Season Landings we're watching based on my personal enjoyment. First up, we have Isekai Shikaku, and this one just had its first episode, right? I think next episode's going up tomorrow. I thought that it was a pretty great episode. I don't think that it's anything so peak, and I don't think it's bad, but I don't think it's mid either. It was a pretty interesting comedy. Like, I didn't really know what I was getting myself into. I thought that it'd be some kind of just generic isekai. Maybe the dude's kind of like a necromancer, but nah, he just wants to die. He just wants to die. He doesn't want to exist. And he's just like, <laughs> put me in a coffin. Please let me take me somewhere else. The other side supporting characters, it's not a goddess. The elf, um, the elf, what's her name? The elf church girl that gave him <laughs> tried to give him the powers that was kind of funny and now she's competing with the cat girl that we didn't even save we were like <laughs> straight up he was like oh i can't reach you i, I can't <laughs> and then we gave up so there's <laughs> a lot of fun in that anime hopefully it's going to continue to deliver i don't know how long the comedy is going to last i wonder if it's either going to get serious or not but hey i'm pretty uh happy to put it in great tier for now next up we have Nobody remembers me. And I would put Nobody Remembers Me in the great tier as well. Um, first episode was very, very lore heavy, but it didn't feel like it dragged on for too long. The first seven minutes, I think I paused and was like, chat, how you feeling about this? And there was a lot of exposition. And I know that there's a lot of lore dump, but they still did it in a pretty concise way. Essentially, four separate races that banded against humans, and you had this Prophet Sid that was able to defend against them and seal each race's hero in different, like, pyramid location graveyards. And then um, there's, like, this moment where timeline gets overwritten to a different realm, and now this realm, Prophet Sid didn't even exist or may have lost. The sword does exist. And then you have what's presumably Prophet Sid. I'm going to assume that she is the wife here, bound to the pillar. The main girl that was used to kind of advertise for this anime. And also no CGI. The animation was fantastic. Anytime you have a dragon coming up in an anime and there's like no CGI, that's already a good sign. So you know what? I'll put it in great tier for now. Will it continue to be good though? I'm not sure. Because, like, it could fall off super hard. But first episode, it was pretty good. It was pretty great. Now, Raising Children. Uh, I don't know if this is good or mid. Like, the premise of this show is just cute kids and just having a fun time. It's just slow. It's just... Mid doesn't mean bad, remember. Mid just means it's okay. Right? It's not standing out. It's not bad. It's just wholesome. But the episode itself, I guess it was fun. I don't know. What the what differentiate good and mid? I when I'm watching this show, I'm like, all right, it's it's wholesome, it's soul healing, it's cute, but I just don't think that it's good enough to be called good. But then again, it's I don't know. Animation quality, it's pretty mid. It's not bad. It's it's just like it's just like okay throughout. So. I'll put it in mid for now. We'll see. I think that this may also be the last time that we watch this series on my channel. It really depends on the performance. A lot of shows have already fallen off by the time we got to episode 3 or 2. For example, Lolly Leveling is pretty much dead already. But I wonder if Raising Child will do the same thing. Based on the early projections of the analytics, I have it right over here. It's doing pretty bad. It's doing pretty fucking bad. Here, let me, let me bring this up. You can see the graph here at this level of performance. Uh, the typical performance in this range is around 780 minimum to 1.3k maximum. And it's getting a 518 on the first four hours of four minutes of upload, which is not bad. It's just holding on. It's just, you know, when we're doing, uh, when we're doing, what's it called? You know, uh, weekly shows, I want them to be exceptional. I'm not trying to waste my time trying to farm mid shows that's going to perform mid. Because I need to focus on the community series. That's more important at the end of the day. So, this will be placed at mid for now. Alright. Next anime. Strongest Mage has been amazing. I will put this at peak. Strongest Mage episode 3, man. What happened? Can anyone tell me what happened in Strongest Mage? I can't. Because we didn't watch. <laughs> it got dropped. I'm sorry. It is what it is. It's um 
again it's just another like average performing series i don't think there's anything special about it kind of got carried by waifus and fan service for a bit the premise seemed interesting but uh, the lack of interest just can't i just can't justify making that over another like sao or like a dangerous in my heart reaction so it's cut off but hey again anytime we drop this shit, anytime we drop an anime all you have to do is vote it in in a community series right if you vote it in as a community series that means that the people actually exist that wants to watch this and if a majority votes it in we can watch it and that's the thing about dropped animes but <laughs> let's get real you really think that a dropped anime is gonna get voted in the reason it got dropped is because there was no audience for it so how the fuck could it possibly win a vote it just doesn't make sense i've yet to have any anime that we've dropped that ever even got mentioned in a video to be voted in let alone even make it to a poll so it is what it is next anime lolly leveling uh mid mid i don't know it's it's like bro's just like going around he collected another servant card lucelia it's cute there's some cunny you know competition between the lollies i want more food i want more food but is it really i don't know it just feels very mid the performance of this show is actually incredibly mid too let me show you what's going on with lolly leveling in terms of analytics right now where is lolly leveling uh, uh, here it is Ugh. Ugh. it's all right it barely hung on right it's barely hanging on but we're not looking for average or below average weekly shows needs to be exceptional right so for that reason it's probably gonna get dropped next week next anime tower of god peak peak easy peak fucking easy come on it's tower of god bro like what, what do i want to say we had the whole power ranking episode entrance exam type where you place your hand on a ball and you hit it or something and you know <laughs> it's gonna display a score and we're gonna be like oh my god it's so strong right stuff like that i always love it's always so hype to see you know in a numeric value to see what differentiates people i think that's why people love tier list as well right it's kind of like ranking system tries to compare different series together everyone kept like doubling other people's scores we got to meet a young family which is another 10 great family prince fucking sucks but he doesn't because he's actually a talented nepo kid bomb is just flexing as fuck slayer drip even got the ranker the um love right his the proctor's attention and now we got to do a fight against him and even bomb just like destroying everyone's scores and then saying nah i'm not taking anybody all seven of you can fail <laughs> so ruthless so peak i'm putting this shit in peak easy and just to show you what the analytics look like for a show that performs really well for a weekly show that's actually exceptional i mean it only got uploaded a couple hours ago let's see right over here look what happens when you do well it's actually so funny how just different it is. Views are up 25%. Like, I don't even have to show you a chart. YouTube literally sends you a fucking paragraph saying, more regular viewers are choosing to watch this video. And they're watching it for longer than usual, helping to increase its reach on YouTube recommendations. Like, it's really that simple. The game of YouTube and trying to get views through the recommendation system, it's really simple. You just make a video on a topic that your audience wants to watch. And if they're going to click on it, and if they're going to watch it for a longer time because they're interested in the topic, it'll simply just get distributed out more. It is that simple. Look at the viewership right over here. In the first three hours and five minutes of upload, it says, typical in this period, low is 640, high is 1.1K. This is hitting like almost 1.4K. It is an exceptionally performing series. And of course, it's also peak. It makes sense, right? It just makes sense. People love this shit. I love this shit. People watch it. It gets more views. Peak. That's why it's in peak tier. Next up, Wistoria, another peak anime. And I'd argue Wistoria was a little bit more hyped than Tower of God, simply because the episode structure, Tower of God was like a testing kind of phase and Wistoria was too. But Wistoria basically is going to be the next episode of Tower of God because we fought a teacher. Edward's, Edward versus Will, right? I'm sure Bomb versus Love is going to be also hyped. But like, bro, we had that show last episode. Holy... Wistoria just continues to amaze me in its quality of animation. The soundtrack is actually peak as well. The storytelling, the pacing, everything about it just 
resonates within me as someone in, that enjoys this power fantasy like you know animes i loved it there was cool lore too regarding the dwarves before and how one hero dwarf was actually able to land one punch on the mage that apparently destroyed like 11,000 or 10,000 dwarves but you know he was able to reach him and gain the respect of the mage so kind of to show the parallels between edward and will right i love Astoria, but fucking alpha dude when is alpha gonna show up when, when is this elf girl gonna ever fucking show up, bro? Alright. Next one. Oshinoko. And Oshinoko. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> huh? Uh-uh? 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 Oh, no, no, we're not dropping Oshinoko. I'm <laughs> I'll put it in good. I think it's... Safe to put Oshinoko in good. The reason that it's good, I think that the material that it's trying to adapt into episode content is extremely weak. Because, like, what is actually the hype going on right now? We're just talking about the background details of what happened in the industry for theater plays and script writing and all the middlemen and how they communicate with the manga and trying to make it come to light, right? That kind of stuff. It's really hard to make that shit interesting. And they're doing a very good job. I think that when I watch Oshinoko, I'm not bored. I think it's very interesting, but you got to understand that most people do not give a fuck about these kind of meeting episodes, right? You've seen Tensura. The meeting episode is so bad. But I thought the way that they handled the adaptation was still interesting for me. Goa getting fucked. It was such a subversion of expectations because I thought that Goa was in the wrong and I wanted the mangaka, Abiko-sensei, to dunk on him. But it turned out that she's actually a very immature, spoiled kid. Not spoiled, but immature kid that has a... She's, she's on the spectrum, right? She's, she's not really all there. She's socially inept. She is no soft skills. She doesn't know how to communicate her feelings. And she became the antagonist by the end. The double brushing tooth... The toothbrush double brushing. I guess they're really trying to show that really creative artists, right, in any domain are a little eccentric and they're trying to show that with Abiko Sensei and yeah, for sure it was interesting for me, but it's just compared to some of the other animes that's really having like pop-off episodes, I can't really justify putting it on the great tier. I think it was good overall. I, I think it's 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 placed on good for now. Next episode, Osan Adventurer. Yo, this shit might actually be peak or great. I, I can't tell if this is top of grade or peak right now. Because most recent adventure episode, not today's episode, today's Monday. And we're going to watch the sec second episode today or third episode today. But dude, maybe it's actually peak. Because like what happened last time, right? We got to meet the third sibling, the eldest sibling of this fucking noble family. That just sucks. God, they are so ageist. Every one of them just keeps rounding his age up to 40. And then we got to see another, you know, oldish adventurer and he's like saying, wow, you know, you're a boomer like me. It gives me motivation. And then he got fucked up and the, the noble guy took his place as a teacher, instructor. And there's a lot of setup, right? I think that today's episode will be peak. Absolutely. When it pops off. But last episode was a bit of setup. We got to see our senpai show up from the Orialcom Fist and they popped off on other NPCs. And seeing the butler on the enemy side start glazing like that demon hunter in Rimuru episode, right? Slime episode where Diablo was fucking up people around, you know, the, the church people. And then the demon slayer was like, oh my god, is that Diablo? Oh my god. See, the same butler had that understanding of the lore and who Oriel Confist was and glazing them. That was pretty funny. It was pretty hype. Introduction to characters is pretty hype, but I think today's episode will be peak. So I'm, I'm going to put it in... Great tier for now. I think compared to these two, like, it, I can't put in the same tier. But I think it's top of great for now. Next episode. What in the fuck? Oh, wait. <laughs> right, right, right. Parry. I only parry. Maybe here? Because, like, what happened? What happened was he parried the rewards, right? He started parrying the rewards. He started parrying everyone. The girl's request. The king's request. He ended up getting the king's blade. Which ended up being a poop scooper for him. Right? It was a bit of a setup episode for sure. But it was still entertaining. Still funny. I think that... Top of good maybe? Top of good maybe? Bottom of great? Top of good? 
Was Nobody Remembers Me better than Perry episode? I like the premise of Nobody Remembers Me, so I'm putting it in great for now. But the more I think about it, where should Perry go? It was still fun. It was really fun to watch him just parry everything. Hmm. I think maybe I'll place it top of good for now. I'll do some readjustments later on. Next, we have the show. The fucking colossal anime that is just hard carrying my viewership. Like, it is actually. It's actually stupid how well Roshidere does. And not in just terms of performance, entertainment value as well. Roshidere is just peaking. Let me show you just a video in analytics for Roshidere, bro. It's actually fucking stupid. It is actually like genuinely stupid how well Roshidere is doing. Not just episode one, but episode two as well. Hold up. Let me find this real quick. Here it is. Oh shit, shit, shit. Bro, what the fuck is going on? Views are 7.9 times higher than usual. Are we more regular? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we've already read this part. We talked about how if regular viewers watch more, then it's going to be even better. But like, look at this shit. The typical range in this period after four days of upload is 1.3 thousand to 3 thousand range. And this shit's hitting for 24 thousand almost. What the fuck is going on? And like, yeah, and then what is going on? It'll literally tell you right here. Popular videos like this are, yeah, sure, of course. Of course, popular videos as well, but why is it popular? It's getting more views from recommendation system, great. It's got higher click-through rate, meaning people are clicking on the video more than often compared to other videos, and people are watching for a longer time. Like, these stats are so fucking pointless for me because you're literally telling me what I know already. Everyone knows this. It's like, huh, I wonder why a video's doing well. Well, the video's doing well because people are watching it for a long time and they're clicking on it. It's just like, no shit, retard. Why are they clicking and watching it for a long time? That is the hard part to try to figure about, man. We look down here. It peaked a couple places. It's probably just the Winces points. But yeah, it is. And if you look at the audience tab as well, there is a lot of new people coming in, but a significant portion of this audience that's watching this is not a bunch of tourists, right? All of these viewers are significantly returning viewers, right? Of course, not subscribed to sub has a, uh, a huge a different margin, but still, people that are returning viewers can be categorized as not subscribed. That's why I believe that Roshi did it right now. This is not tourists. This is actually a hidden community effort where it just resonated towards so many people that were waiting for this series, and now it's just popping the fuck off, and I'm so happy that it's doing well. I'm glad you guys are enjoying it, but easy peak, right? It's just like, what, 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 what? just Yuki mind-blowing, just mind-fucking me. The, 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 the little sister was Yuki, I'm like, what? I thought the back of her head, it was a little dark, and I'm like, hmm, kind of looks like Yuki, and it was actually Yuki, and I was like, no fucking way. No fucking way. That shit was crazy. And then, I guess there was some cunny moments of the competition, right? Of Yuki trying to flex on uh, Arya, trying to say that, oh, I know my, I know, you know, I, I know my uh, big bro, Masachika better than you and, you know, spicy ramen shit, the cunny uh, dress, the wardrobe episode, right? They were all pretty good moments. There's even a interesting plot as well of like, oh, flashback of why Masachika probably doesn't want to join the the run again for presidency, but he might join in uh, as with Arya, right? Because you need to run in a pair of two. So I think that on top of the Winces fan service and everything else, it's just peak. This shit's just fucking peak, man. Next up, what do we got? We got days with my stepsister, and I would put this in good. Like, days with my stepsister. Very slow burn anime. And slow burn doesn't mean bad. It's just not my cup of tea. And remember, this is my own preference of shows. I can I can tell that the show is like trying to be good, right? You look at the whole tone, the setting that it's trying to set, the whole conversations about dependency and wanting to be independent and her having these insecurities because people shit on her mom for being like a only high school education and working in a bar and she needs to you know, look good because this is our armor. There's some deep themes going on for sure, but just because it's like deep doesn't mean it's really enjoyable for me. 
Like, I get it. I'm just watching it. I think it's funny whenever there's filler animation happening and the dude's fucking taking 30 seconds to walk across the road. I'm like, damn, you really fucking did that. It's all right. It's good. People are enjoying this as well. I think that it's 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 just solid good. It's, it's just good overall. Giji Haram. Giji Haram is another one that I would probably put on good as well. Maybe above Oshinoko. Giji Haram... This shit's actually so cringe. <laughs> Giji Haram, like, low-key. This shit is actually so cringe every time she has to... Okay. Oh, I'm talking like Ipchi, I'm talking like... It's cringe, but it's good. It's, it's cringe, but it's good, right? There's a... It, the fa the pace is extremely fast-paced, too. Right? It's, it's like, go, go, go. They even, like... They didn't skip it, but they had, like, Culture Festival. They had, like, New Year's. They had a whole bunch of other shit where... You know, slice of five rom com episodes with dedicated entire episodes towards, but it did all right. But oh, Giji Haram is a little bit scary right now because the first episode did amazing. Let's look at this Giji, right? If you look at Giji Haram, let's compare the first and second episodes, right? First episode, again, in any seasonal anime, first episode's gonna do always well, right? It's always gonna do well. It's like doubling the, you know, the expected viewership because, you know, it's a new show. Everyone wants to watch the new show, right? But after they watch the first episode, a lot of people eventually get filtered out, right? And then the second episode, it's doing enough. It's doing okay, right? It's still top of the expected range. It didn't fall off. It's doing okay. So I hope that it'll continue to do okay. I think that, uh, I don't think we'll drop Kiji Haram. I, I, I don't think we, we need to at all. This is what I'm talking about where it's just like a... a this is like a weekly show where Roshi Dairy is exceptional, but Giji Haram hitting uh, you know, above average is perfectly fine. So we're keeping that shit for now. Next anime. Elusive Samurai. I would put Elusive Samurai at the top of grade or... I don't know. Top of grade or in peak. The fight scenes are fucking crazy. The fights are crazy. I don't know why they keep doing this though. They keep... They keep like... Making really sus jokes about the Shota. Like, Yoshirige sensei? Yoshirige san? You know, the fake fucking shaman? Gojo Zatoru's voice actor? Bro, even the second episode was already getting screenshots of the fucking Shota having like sus, you know, blushing face and they're tweeting that shit. It's going viral again. What is going on with Japan, bro? People love this Shota. Uh, aside from the blatant fan service for Shotokans, um, the overall theme betrayal and gathering the new partners and understanding how he's going to fight because he is so elusive, right? He may be weak. He can be strong, though, if he uses his speed to his advantage and creates force that way. But it seems like it's like a, the battles are almost like portrayed as a tag, right? It's like a game of tag where you're supposed to... I don't know, dodge everything and distract and then you get the and then you got your two other people come in and then like, you know, help you out with the assist. The villain of the week was the uncle, absolute trash person, but the way that they were able to portray his demonicness through just imagery of him looking like a demon, the different animation, fantastic. Animation quality, pretty much like a 9 or a 10 out of 10, right? But I don't think animation quality alone can determine the rating of a show. Still, it's still really good. I, I, I put this in top of grade for now. Unfortunately, we're not able to get the crazy fucking numbers like Baldi right now. Joe is killing it. Joe is absolutely killing it with the Lucid Samurai because he's doing like these AI JP subs, which I think is so smart. He's able to tap into a Japanese audience and quite a lot of these people. Actually, let's check this out. Let's check this out for now. Let's check out a uh, description. Uh, elusive Samurai. Let's look at episode one and two. Episode one. Not... Talking about the viewership, it's doing all right, right? For sure, it's um, above average. But the audience is very interesting, where a lot of them are from Japan. It's extremely rare to get this big of a breakdown from Japan. Usually, this breakdown is the United States in number one, and then usually Philippines, number two, and Indonesia, number three, and stuff like that. But for some reason, it's obviously Japanese history. It does really well with that audience. Over here, it's actually it's like recovered. In the beginning, I was a little bit worried. I, I, I thought that Elusive Samurai fell off for me for a bit, but then it started to recover. And now it's, you know, top of the expected range, so absolutely we're keeping this for now. And the Japanese audience, again, the Japanese audience love this shit, because why? 
Oh, it's a Japanese historical show. What did you expect, right? It just makes sense. Now, I think Elusive Samurai can safely go at the top of great tier. Next anime. Nokotan? All right, we got to make a separate. Well, I was going to say make a separate tier, but honestly, I think this should peak though. Like, it is it is like, um, hold on. Like, I was going to create a separate tier called just a deer tier because it's not really fair to compare this brain rod cracked anime where it's just having random fun and then it's just beating everything else, right? <laughs> so I thought I'd put in a separate tier, but last episode, genuinely, genuinely, it was fun. The whole... I love the sensei. I love how the sensei just knows so much about Koshi. And even like creates these fun trivia environment where the whole audience is there. Something about that format, I love so much. The sensei was willing to just take all the kids out of the school. And it was like a trivia kind of time. Everyone's having fun. You know, there's this nonsensical fucking trivia about Koshi's private shit. That never needed to get leaked, but they leaked that shit regardless. We have the Siscon, you know... Uh, her name is not Koshi Tan, it's Koshi In. No, that's a baseball tournament. Koshi something else. But she, you know, at the end of the day, just wanted to have her sister back. But now she can hang out with us. And Koshi An, that's the one, yeah. And Nokotan, bro, Nokotan in these like chibi moments is actually so cute. It's just brain rot, mindless fun. But I think that it's definitely peak. I think that's pretty peak, man. Next and the final anime of this week is Failure Frame. And I would put Failure Frame... Uh, excuse me? The acting was great. It's either top of grade or bottom of peak. You think it's mid? The animation is mid for sure. Like, here's the one thing about CGI. The... Oh... I'll get the too many losing heroines back up. The thing, I'll, I'll get the too many missing heroines back up. Good call, good call. Um, failure frame, the animation, like CGI, I always make fun of it, but if you use CGI well, then it doesn't feel like a whiplash. But last episode of failure frame, I think is a perfect example of doing CGI wrong, where you just keep pivoting from 2D animation into CGI immediately, which is, causes such a loss of immersion. And when you have shit like that happening, like people hate CGI even more. The CGI was absolutely fucking awful in the dungeon. And I wish that they would just like figure out a way where they can balance it so that it just doesn't feel like such a whiplash every time you just start transitioning. Now, regarding, now aside from the animation, the acting from main character was pretty good. I got baited. I got baited so hard. But because I got baited, I think that makes for the good content. And like him showing more of the dark side, right? He was known as air, as in he just exists. But there's this fucked up side of him because of his childhood trauma, where that side is slowly coming out. And he got the soul leader so well. He baited, he baited. I wonder if we're going to debate thing too with the other classmates. Like, oh no, oh no, psych! It'd be hilarious if we actually do that shit again against the other classmates. In fact, I hope that it happens. Due to the CGI, I... I'll put this shit here. Yeah, I'll, pu I'll put this shit here. Regarding the performance of Failure Frame, it is actually quite good. Failure. Episode 1 and 2 did significantly well. And it's expected because we are the shitty Isekai channel, right? Viewers are up. Great. Good, good, good. And these are all... Exactly. Look at this. This is the craziest shit where views are up really fucking high. Everything's looking good. And I don't even have tourists. It's just returning motherfuckers that I've collected by watching shitty Isekai over and over and over again. So... You know, we main Isekai in this channel, so it's expected that it's gonna hit these numbers without the help of an external community or an audience that we haven't even reached yet. Episode 2, fantastic as usual. And again, <laughs> no new viewers, just all returning viewers, and there's nothing wrong with that. Right? And just to show you, again, just to prove that how, just because they're returning viewers doesn't mean that, you know, they're all subscribed. Not subscribed portion, this is almost like a 50-50 split. Yeah, look at the disparity of the ratio between returning and new viewers, right? New viewers literally means like people that just found your channel for the first fucking time. While returning is like, they can be counted as not subbed or subbed. And I really don't give a fuck whether or not you sub to my channel. 
straight up. Like, it does not matter if you sub to my channel. Just watch the video and fuck off. That's all I care about. And then we have one more anime that I forgot to include in our list. Where is the Pokemon anime where he collects every cucked girl? Let's see. Let's see. Where are you? Where are you? Where? There you are. This shit's straight fucking dookie, bro. And that is the end of week two of summer 2024 tier list. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm kidding. Is it dookie? It made me fucking mad. It made me fucking mad. I mean, this show, I, I think a lot of people enjoy it when I'm mad, though. Genuinely. I think people actually fucking love it when I start getting mad and start fucking having beef with 2D fucking characters that doesn't even exist, man. And, like, I saw a comment. I saw a comment saying, bro expects immature 15-year-old kids in high school to act like proper functioning adults. And I, and I thought about that for a second, and I was like, you know what? You got a point. You got a point. Like, because, like, these are dumb high school kids. Like, what else would you expect? They are realistic. And I was like, shit, you're right. Why am I forcing my idealized opinions on these kids? When they're just trying to figure shit out. So it's like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. But, uh, it's not mid. Probably in great tier, right? It's probably in great tier. First episode, the whole premise of this shit is like, this guy is just your run of the mill, meek, just beta, cucked, submissive, paper mache wet cardboard main character no personality it's just just existing he was kind of standing up for himself when you know the blue hair girl started to give him the bento with shitty bentos right i hate the blue hair girl i genuinely hate that blue hair girl that girl can actually rot in that third wheel hell for the rest of her life i hate her so much she is so selfish she is so selfish and Oh, oh, you deserve everything and more. Like, you genuinely deserve this hell. I hope that you continue to get cucked. The other two girls, uh, we have the first year girl from the lit club, right? And she's getting cucked by the the student, the club press, I guess. And then you have the tanned girl, who's like the sporty girl who's getting cucked by the smart girl, right? Uh, we, we don't know about the other two girls enough yet, but the blue hair girl, like, I hate her. Like, I want you, I want you to know like, I genuinely hate her. The, it's the same feeling of me hating on Natsukawa in Dream Boys or Realist. Not quite there yet. Natsukawa and her, I get the same feeling. This rage, this fucking... This feeling of needing to go to war with these fictional 2D characters, man. But it's still fun to watch. It's, it's still fun to watch. Episode 1 did alright. I wonder what the performance will be like, though, in the future episodes to see if this is actually the true you know, interest we have. And there we have it. Summer 2024. I can safely say these four are the peak of this week. I can safely say that these are great. Absolutely. These are all right. These are all right. I, I'm sure Oshinoko's time will come. It's just the material right now is a bit weak, right? It's, it's, it's not the... I don't think the adaptation's weak. I think the adaptation's fucking amazing. It's just like, how the fuck are you gonna try to get en engagement when your source material right now is just so weak right now? And then it's just like, eh, this is just probably going to get dropped. This shit's probably going to get dropped. This, we'll see about that. And that's pretty much it. This is second week of Summer 24. And you don't like my opinion? Are you mad that I said something bad about your anime? Well, go fuck yourself. Make your own tier list. Then I'll show up and I'll say cringe, stupid opinion. Then you'll understand exactly how I feel right now.